and All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to our informational webinar on two upcoming cruises that the World Affairs Council of Philadelphia and our partners travel program is hosting next year. Uh, I'm Andrew Hott. I'm the director of travel here at the World Affairs Council of Philadelphia. And I have with me Fiorella Fernandez, who's our uh, programs coordinator, as well as Colin Church and Donna Barfield from uh, Thalassa Journeys. Uh, today, we will be reviewing the itineraries, the ships, and the featured lecturers on these amazing tours. Um, then we'll show a short video um, on uh, travel insurance and take some questions after that. Um, the brochures for these tours have gone out. Um, well, uh, the first tour, the brochure has gone out. So if you haven't received that, let us know. And the other one, um, the South American Odysseys, will be doing a little bit um, farther than that. So. Um, and why travel with World Affairs? So uh, World Affairs has been operating a travel program for 45 years. Uh, we work with the highest quality travel partners around the world to deliver programs with expert guides and directors, um, giving you a firsthand experience into the culture and the people you are visiting. We provide access to high level briefings, send you educational resources to enhance your experience and facilitate personal interactions with community leaders, experts, and historians. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to our partners at uh, Thalassa. Hi, this is Colin Church with the Alice of Journeys. Um, I am in the reservations department here at the Lassa Journeys. Um, I will be the one, my team and I will be the ones that will assist you with booking your reservations, helping you out with any extra hotel rooms, transfers, you know, helping out with the deposit, taking that and just adding you to the reservations. Uh, we will send you all the documentation that you will need for your journey which be in your journey guide, your invoices, your final documents and all that. And the, once you sign up, you'll get a welcome email. They will have an outline of when you'll get all that information. Um, now, our office will be available for you by phone call and email whenever you are have any questions or need any assistance with anything. And all that information will be in the brochure for you, um, now our email address and our phone number. We look forward to having you all join us on this wonderful journey. Um, hi, I'm Donna. I'm, I'm with uh, Thalassa Journeys, and I am the uh, program operations manager, uh, which is just a fancy way of saying that uh, I set up all your shore excursions for these uh, wonderful adventures. Um, if you haven't been to Greenland before, it's an amazing destination and it has so much to offer uh, culturally and geologically and historically. Um, your arrival city is Keflavik. Um, that's where the international airport is. And we've reserved hotel space at the um, courtyard by Marriott, which is uh, about 10 minutes from the airport. Um, the Your first event uh, on the first day will be a welcome dinner. So we would encourage you to arrive in Keflavik um, early. Uh, many flights arrive very early in the morning, but if you can get there by at least four o'clock, uh, because we'll have um, a uh, six o'clock or 6.30 welcome dinner for you at a nearby restaurant, um, it's a lovely restaurant called the Kef. Uh, uh, it's in the Kef Hotel and it's the Kef restaurant. They have um, a great variety of local cuisine as well as international cuisine. But that's where we'll gather and everybody will get to, to know one another. You'll meet your lecturers and uh, we'll have a fun celebration to kick off the adventure. The following day, um, we'll try not to start too early, but we'll begin with a visit to the Viking World Museum, uh, where you can learn a little bit about the history of, um, of Iceland and also see um, a lot of artifacts as well as a, um, a full scale replica of a Viking ship. After that, we're going to go over to the Gunnivor geothermal site so you can learn uh, exactly what uh, Iceland is about. The major feature of Iceland is its um, geothermal features and uh, there'll be the largest uh, mud pool and hot spring there. And um, you can, it, the, the earth's crust in that area. So then you might remember the, um, 
the uh, volcano eruption that they had last year, which is done now, um, but we'll be seeing the effects of that um, of that volcano explosion. Then we'll go to lunch, and after that, we'll board the ship at the uh, pier in Reykjavik. So you will have some time in Reykjavik before embarking on the Vega. Uh, when you board, there'll be an orientation. Uh, you'll be taken to your cabin where you'll find your luggage there waiting for you. And we'll set sail in the early evening. Heading north, um, our first visit is going to be Skuljundin. Sorry, these Grand Greenlandic names are challenging, but you'll all be experts by the end of the voyage. Um, it is a, um, an, a two fjords, set between two fjords, and our excursions there will be by Zodiac. So the, the ship will come at anchor and will board the Zodiacs, and um, you'll uh, navigate in between the ice, and this, um, you'll, it's a chance, your first chance to see whales. It's a great place for whales, fin whales in particular, but also um, there's a chance you might see gray whales, uh, a lot of seabirds, uh, musk oxen, and uh, maybe polar bears if you're lucky. They're um, single hunters, so uh, you have to keep your eye out, and the staff is very good at sighting wildlife, so um, they'll be the first to point them out to you. Um, our next day, we approach Prince Christensen, which is uh, on the tip of Greenland and it's a beautiful area and that it's also known for its whales and wildlife. But then our first call um, on the mainland will be at Apilituk. Um, it's a small town and there is a resident population there that we'll be visiting and we'll um, actually visit the church and hear the local choir sing and um, have a chance to enjoy a kaffir milk, which is a Greenlandic tradition. It's coffee uh, where the community gets together and they share, you know, uh, cakes. It's, it's a wonderful experience and a chance to meet the locals. Um, the following day, we'll, uh, we'll go to Ivutuk, and um, that is where we'll visit um, and it's an abandoned mine, mining town. So there's no one living there now, but it was, a very important um, mine that produced um, that produced cryolite, which was important for the production of fighter planes in World War II. And there are several areas around Greenland that were key for the U.S. military in World War II, um, which have you know now been abandoned or um, repurposed. Um, We'll take Zodiacs to shore. Uh, you'll be using Zodiacs quite a lot on this expedition. It's, um, if you've not been on a Zodiac before, we'll have um, the expedition staff showing you the ins and outs, how to get in, how to get out, and you'll be assisted all the way along. Um, and we will provide you with a, um, a comprehensive packing list and what kind of clothing you'll need, what weather to expect. Um, but is it's a cold destination, not horribly cold. It is summer, um, so, but you can expect around 45 degrees. Uh, it might feel colder because it will be um, damp and you'll be among ice, which is very reflective uh, as well. So um, you can get some, some challenging weather, some clouds, but... Um, you know, we do our best to make sure that uh, you get to shore at every opportunity. Um, so visiting Nook is the following day. Nook is the capital of Greenland, and they have the most wonderful museum there. It's the National Museum of Greenland, and it actually holds um, excavations from nearby sites, and they have um, a set of uh, mummies there that are six about 6,000 years old. Um, we're offering uh, a walk through town. There'll be a, a local guide to take you through and show you the monuments in the old harbor. Uh, the following day, we visit Sisimut. Uh, Sisimut has an interesting museum as well called the Museum of Trade and Industry, and it gives you sort of the development of um of the 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 wider area around the west coast of greenland um from past to present 
Um, we're offering a, an optional excursion, which is a hike to Telly Island. And there's a, an, an Inuit village, tur village and turf farm uh, it's actually an archaeological site, and that's where the uh, mummies uh, came from, were excavated from. It can be a challenging hike. It's off-road, so um, our expedition staff will give you a good briefing on what to expect if you uh, don't feel like the hike is for you. Um, the town of Nook actually has quite a lot to offer. It's uh, an interesting, um, sorry, it's an interesting mix of... Um, modern and traditional architecture there. You can kind of see uh, how Greenland, because of its um, geological location and all the ice that formed around it, didn't develop the way the, the, uh, the rest of the world did um, until recently when ice has been receding from the shoreline and there's more and more tundra, grass and wildlife available. Um, and now, you know, modern technology has allowed them to uh, build more modern structures. The following two days will be spent in Disco Bay um, at Ilulisat. That's a very exciting area. Ilulisat is the site of the um, of this massive glacier, and it it's um, the ice from the glacier is funneled through, as it breaks off it's funneled through this very long fjord called ice fjord so we'll be running a shuttle up to ice fjord so you can walk along the boardwalk and see um this these massive chunks of ice all crushed together and the pressure that builds pushes it out through this fjord into the bay and then we'll also offer cruises in the bay um so you can cruise among the icebergs which are just enormous. Um, it's quite an experience. Um, the following day, we are at uh, Kangarlooswak. Kangarlooswak is on the west coast. It's about midway up the island of Greenland. And it also played a very important role in World War II. There's actually an old um, airfield there built by the Americans and a nine hole golf course, <laughs> which is very American, uh, but that has all been uh, taken over and uh, mostly by wildlife. There's uh, um, quite a bit of tundra, which means it's an excellent chance to see Arctic hare. You have to keep your eyes sharp because uh, just like anywhere else in the world, rabbits uh, don't herd. So, <laughs> Um, and in the summertime, of course, they have their winter, their summer coats, which is brown rather than white. So Arctic hare, Arctic fox, there's um, a large population of muskox, which are wonderful to see. They're massive creatures um, and we'll spend some time in Zodiacs exploring the fjord. The following day, of course, is the end of our program, and that's when we'll be returning to Iceland um, by charter flight. And we'll have um, overnight accommodations for you again at the Marriott um, before you return home on the 30th. And that is Iceland and Greenland. Do you, uh, do you want to offer questions on this program before we move to the next then? Yeah, that sounds yeah, great. We had one person join us. Fran, if you have any questions, please let us know about this journey that we just went over. And if not, we can move forward to South America. So I'll just give a second, just in case. Wonderful. Wonderful. Let us move on. Okay, terrific. So uh, a very different type of experience in a very different area of the world. The South American Odyssey begins in Barbados, where it will be nice and warm in October. Um, um, and we'll have a very different set of recommended clothing for you there, as well as the local conditions. Uh, like Greenland, it will be, uh, well, it, it will be part cultural tour and part expedition once we get into the Amazon. But we'll begin in Bridgetown. At the moment, we are um, working on an optional extension in case you want to arrive, arrive a day early and relax and not have to worry about um, delayed flights or anything. But there are um, good flight options um, connecting through Florida, through Miami, 
to reach Bridgetown in the Barbados. Um, they arrive in the early afternoon. So if you choose not to do the optional extension, you would simply arrive in Bridgetown and we'll transfer you directly to the ship where you'll embark and we'll begin our voyage right away. The ship will sail in the early evening again. And um, our first call will be the next day at uh, the port of Spain in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, we'll be spending our first day visiting the Caroni Nature Reserve. Um, it's a, um, a, a wetland area, a protected wetland. And um, it's the best chance to see uh, birds. So if anybody has a life list, get it out because you'll be able to knock off a number of species on this program, uh, including the scarlet ibis, which you see there. Um, there's quite a large population of scarlet ibis, um, but we'll be boarding local boats uh, to go through the Caroni Reserve with uh, local um, wildlife naturalists on board. Um, we will have a day at sea. And I should say um, the days at sea, which uh, on Greenland, there's just one, but uh, there are a couple on this program. It gives you a great opportunity to enjoy the ship's amenities, but also attend lectures. As you know, we will have um, uh, uh, Nigella Hillgarth uh, with us on both of these programs. And she is a wonderful wildlife. Um, she's Her specialty are birds, but she really can cover quite a number of topics. And she will be giving lectures throughout both programs, but there will also be lecturers covering uh, everything from local history and culture to um, the geology, marine biology, and uh, everything in between, really. Um, so after Port of Spain, we will visit Guyana, um, stopping in Georgetown. We'll have, um, we're working out the timing on this, but we uh, are planning to do a flight to see the um, Kiter Falls, which is quite spectacular. There's a wonderful picture of it there. Um, you can't see them, but there are boardwalks surrounding the falls, so you can get quite close and uh, perhaps even feel the spray. So uh, you may get a little wet, as you would visiting any falls, but the excitement of being that close to that much energy is uh, pretty powerful. But in route to the falls, uh, once we arrive uh, and we're walking on the boardwalk, you'll have a great opportunity to see quite a lot of wildlife, especially birds. And the flora is quite spectacular, I should say. Um, on our return to Georgetown, we'll have time for a tour of the town. There are some um, there are some wonderful historic sites there, including um, some colonial forts, and um, and you'll see the Dutch uh, um, influence on the buildings as well as in the fort and British as well. Um, there's a market, the Straubel Market, um, which is a great your first chance probably uh, to get some of those souvenirs that everybody back home is waiting for. The following day, we'll be in Suriname visiting Parambio and our time will be spent there uh, in the village of New Amsterdam. Uh, we'll have guided tours there and it's located right on the banks of the Suriname River. It's quite beautiful and a UNESCO Her World Heritage Site. Um, there is Fort Zelandia, which is a 17th century fort um, it, surrounded by uh, a thousand palms and parkland. And we're going to visit also the uh, botanical garden in Parambio. Um, the following day, we visit French Guiana and Ile de Salou. If anybody's ever seen Papillon, you might be familiar with the story of Ile de Salou. It was, um, it has quite a reputation for the uh, penal colony that existed there, French penal colony. And the remains of the building still exist. Um, some of them, some of the uh, parts of the prison have been overtaken by nature. So it has almost a feel of, um, uh, of Cambodia, you know, um, it, just the uh, the massive um, structure of this, the prison itself and the trees that are 
just sort of growing out of rock. Um, but it's also some wonderful wildlife and there's a fantastic museum there and we'll have local guides to take us through and to tell us the story. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> we'll have a day at sea at that. So you'll have some time to relax and digest what you've seen and, and listen to the lectures uh, before we enter Brazil, arrive in Brazil and enter the Amazon. Our excursions in the Amazon will be by Zodiac. Um, we will be visiting some local villages there, um, but we'll spend several several days cruising in, in the um, Amazon, mainly in the basin. Um, and depending on how much, you know, what the rainfall has been like um, and how much the waters have receded, We'll have excursions regardless, either they'll be by Zodiac or they'll be on foot. If the water is receded enough, we'll have more opportunities to walk on the paths in the jungle, which is quite exciting. Um, as everybody knows, it's the Amazon or the lungs of the nation. Um, the flora and fauna there is spectacular. It's abundant. Um, I don't want to say that it's a chance that you could see a jaguar, but, um, you know, they they are very elusive, um, but there's quite a lot of wildlife to see and birds as well. Um, the villages are a wonderful experience because it does give you a chance to, to actually visit several different villages and see what the similarities and the differences are between them, but also to spend time among the villagers and uh, meet them and learn how, you know, in some cases, uh, the modern world hasn't really touched them at all. Um, and in other cases, uh, you know, it's a mix of, um, of modern technology and traditional lifestyles, mainly dictated by the environment that they live in. Um, we'll be cruising the Brevis Narrows um, in the Amazon and arrive in Belém, uh, which is um, is has a, a very interesting history. Um, there's uh, a beautiful cathedral. There's an opera house there, and its um, its development is tied to the rubber industry, um, the production of rubber, um, which it, you know it's not as prominent as it as it was back in the 17th century. But there are some beautiful sights to see, and we'll have a tour of Belém, and then um, arrive at our hotel for an overnight and a farewell dinner. Um, and the following day, uh, you'll depart back home. We are offering to an extension on this voyage. There's an additional um, five days. Um, which will visit further into the uh, into the Amazon. Um, similar excursions, but the farther in you go, the, it gets a little bit wilder. But we'll visit some of the cities like uh, Fortaleza, Recife, and Olinda. Um, and that extension will end in Salvador de Bahia. Um, that portion of the program is still a little bit under development, under developed now, or still in development now. So I'll have more details and we'll be able to send out um, an information sheet on the extension so you can decide if you want to join us for um, an in depth excursion farther into the Amazon, into the jungle. Wonderful. So do we have any questions on either of these journeys? I know we just went over South America, but we have gone over two of them thus far. Do we have any questions? Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Easy crowd. If possible, I would love if we could just chat about the ship really quickly. Um, Colin or Donna, if you have a little bit of expertise about the Vega, we would love to hear it. <clears throat> Um, do you want to go first, Donna? Or no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I mean, the Vega. It's it's a smaller ship, so it's very nice. It's really quick to get around. It's gorgeous. Um, the staterooms. You know, if you have the ocean view staterooms on Category D and E, um, you know they're not. It says oval windows, but they're really large oval windows. The 
have a nice sit-in area in all the rooms. The beds can be either a queen size bed or separated into two beds. Um, every stateroom, which is a really cool feature, has a little kind of digital fireplace in it that makes it seem like you're sitting by a fire. It even lets off the crackling and the sounds that a fire makes, um, which is just a really cool thing thing to have in each stateroom. Um, storage in them is tons. You will have tons of space for everything. The luggage will fit underneath your bed. So you won't have to worry about that being in the way. There's plenty of closet space to hang stuff up if you want to. Um, and then there's plenty of drawers and space all around there. So you won't have to worry about having anything around. Um, and that is for all the staterooms with plenty of space. Um, you know, categories B and C are both on deck five which have a balcony, which is always nice to have, especially when you're cruising on some of these cruises, you know, when you're going through the Amazon and all that, and you want to get out on the balcony to see everything, see the birds flying by, you can. And same thing in Greenland, you want to see those icebergs from your balcony, you're able to. But, um, you know, if you really want to get the best view, it's going to be on deck six at the Swan's Nest, where you pretty much are at the front of the ship and just have a view that is amazing when you're on the ship. Um, also on the ship for the outlets, um, they do have US outlets, they have USB outlets, and they have the European um, type C outlet. So they'll have 120 volt and 220 volts. So you really don't need to worry about bringing any adapters or anything while you're on the ship because they'll have plenty of outlets um, for you to plug into if you need to. Um, the ship does have washers and dryers that are free to use. So if you decide, especially for the Greenland journey, you know, if you're going to have gloves or hats or your clothes are going to get wet or anything, it's great to be able to go in there and just throw them in the dryer to get them ready. Or if they do get dirty and you want to wash them, you can, or if you don't want to pack that money, that much clothing, so you can just have carry ons. Um, you'll be able to be, do your laundry on the ship if you do decide you'd like to. Um, they do have a service where you can wash the laundry. They'll wash it for you. Um, it's not dry cleaning. It's just a washer and dryer that they use. And that service does cost you. You know, It's the same as a hotel. You pay per item. And I think the cheapest item is $2.50. And it goes up to somewhere into the $15 and $20. So it's not super cheap but it, it's definitely there for you if you do want the service um they have the restaurant for the for the ship is on deck four which is just amazing um for breakfast they will have a buffet for you where you can go out and you just have a lot of different choices to pick on what you want to eat um, lunch will be more of a buffet style as well which will have different cuisines each day um, they usually have three to four options for you to pick from on what you want and then a lot of stuff between salads and just side dishes and lots of desserts um, i think they had bread pudding on every buffet when i was there and i love bread pudding so i ate it every time um, and then dinner is an actual sit down dinner where you'll get a menu um, to pick order from and it will be absolutely fantastic um, it was both times i've been on the ship i really enjoyed the meals and one of my favorite part about traveling other than seeing the world is the cuisines that you get to try while you're traveling because it's going to be a lot different than some places you're used to especially here in the u.s um <clears throat> Let's see what they have on deck six is where the bar and lounge area is. That is where most of the lectures or pretty much all of the lectures will probably take place. Um, and then they have a little area on the back of it where they'll occasionally do some barbecues and some outdoor grilling, which is right by the pool area, which is a really nice atmosphere when they are able to do those outdoor kind of parties. And on deck three is where you're going to be loading on and off of the Zodiac. And they, on deck three, each cabin has a locker there where you'll be able to store, you know, anything that you need in there, especially for the Greenland journey. Um, you know, if you're using their boots, which I'm sh they'll have for you, you can keep them right in there. So you don't have to bring them to your cabin every time. Um, if you want to store your parka or a jacket in there, you can as well. And that will be there for you where you'll go and have all your stuff before you get ready to get on the Zodiac. And the Zodiacs, they're going to have at least 
three people, they have two to three people helping you get on and off the Zodiacs every time. So it is very easy. They're very experienced at it. They will help you. And so you don't have to worry about trying to get on and off them on your own. They will have a lot of people there to assist you with that. Uh, what am I missing, Donna? The, the ships are gorgeous. Oh, well, I, I would just like that. to, yeah, I would just like to say um, the observation lounge, which is where the lectures are held. The lectures are broadcast onto the ship's monitors, which are in your room. So if you don't feel up to going to the observation lounge, you just need a little alone time. You can still watch and hear the lectures from your cabin. Um, also, um, I would like to say that for the um, the Zodiacs, where you board the Zodiacs, it's a low step in height. Uh, it's just a couple of stairs. So it's you're not descending a gangway to reach the Zodiacs. Um, they have a C platform that the Zodiacs pull up to. So it's easy to get easy to get in and out. Um, what else can I say? Um, while you're uh, on your uh, program, you'll be attended by uh, one or two, depending on the size of the group of our, of the Thalassa tour directors. And that per person will be with you from beginning to end. And um, if there's anything that you need, and the ship staff is incredibly attentive. Um, everybody comes off the ships raving about how good they are. And, um, but, you know, we have our tour director looking after all your needs. The monitors are where you'll find um, all of the activities that are scheduled on the ship. But the monitors in your room will have a private channel um, for your group where um, your daily program will be posted and we'll also be delivering a paper version of that daily program to you. And that the reason for that is that um, we have uh, private excursions, uh, which may be different from what the ship is offering. The Swan Hellenic offers um, basic excursions and uh, we like to get a little bit more into depth. So our excursions may be a little longer of a timing, may be a little bit different. Uh, so we'll have a daily program that will, you know, outline the excursion for you and our core directors uh, will brief you on those excursions and what to expect. Um, once we're in Greenland, of course, and once we're in the Amazon, that's where the, the true expedition excursions begin and those are run by swan hellenic so in those cases where we're getting off the ship and we're going to be exploring on zodiacs we will have uh zodiacs assigned to our group so you'll travel together and you'll be attended in that case uh not only by our tour director uh who's meant to just uh, make sure everything goes seamlessly but also by uh the Zo the uh, expedition naturalist who will be there to show you um you know talk to you about the wildlife uh, about the culture in the villages and um and there will be briefings every night from the expedition staff as well uh, that's a lot of information. So please uh, be confident that you will receive this information over and over again uh, to make sure that you're fully prepared. And of course, once you're on board, um, you know, our tour directors will be able to answer any questions you have. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And I know, Donna, you mentioned uh, Dr. Nigella Hilgarth, but if you wouldn't mind yes. just going into a little bit about her and the fact that she'll be joining us for both of these amazing cruises and just a little bit more about her history and how she'll be adding to these experiences. Yeah. Well, uh, Dr. Hilgarth, and actually uh, it's Dr. Hilgarth and D. Borsma, Dr. Borsma as well, uh, they work together at the Center for Ecosystem Sentinels. Uh, they're both biologists and uh, both have uh, been with us on um, expeditions uh, on board the Vega as well as uh, other ships. And um, they have quite a resume. So um, Dr. Hilgarth, she is um, the Center for Ecosystem Sentinels, who she currently represents is the biology department at the University of Washington State. 
Um, she also worked at the Birch Aquarium for many years and developed their program. And as the executive director, she's worked at the Tracy Aviary Center in Salt Lake City. And uh, she was also with the Scripps Institute. Uh, Dr. Borsma is also with the Center of Ecosystems and Sentinels, and she is um, uh, has an equally long history. She's uh, done uh, mainly field work, uh, which makes it even more exciting because um, she can talk about intimately about her experiences in the field in many of the areas that we'll be visiting. So um, besides the two of them, uh, um, we'll have the shipboard um, specialists as well. Um, that is Greenland. For South America, we'll have, uh, again, um, Dr. Hilgarth with us. And I don't have the names. Um, I'm waiting to find out who the other guest lecturers will be on board um, for Great. the Amazon for South America. Wonderful. Thank you so much for expanding on that. Um, so just a little bit about how to register. Let me pull up this slide for you. So I, my name is Fiorella. Again, I'm programs coordinator here at World Affairs. And if I'm, I'll be the main point of contact for registering for this program. So I have two phone numbers on the screen. The top one is our main travel number. And then the bottom one is my direct line. Feel free to call the one on the top or call or text the one on the bottom and or email us at travel at wacfilla.org. And we'll be more than happy to help you with whatever questions or concerns or anything that you have about these two journeys. Additionally, you can go and visit our website and we have tour or web page or what, excuse me, tour specific web pages that we've created for each of these. And on these web pages, you can find additional information, you can find the brochures, and you can also find the reservation form that we've created for these journeys. And this form will be sent to us and then we will pass it on to Thalassa so that they're able to move on to next steps in terms of your reservation. So again, if you have any questions or concerns, please give us a call, text us, or email us again at travel at wacfilla.org. Thank you so much for joining us on this amazing conversation about these two wonderful journeys. Thank you so much to Colin. Thank you so much to Donna for expanding on them, for giving us wonderful information about these journeys and just kind of taking us day by day about how spectacular they will be. Um, please let us know if you have any questions, if you're interested in any either of these journeys or if you're interested in any of the other ones that we're offering. And yeah, have a wonderful rest of your day. Please let us know if we can do anything for you. Thank you so much.